don't take the clothes in. Well, what's the large? Is this a large one? I don't, I don't make nothing out of mine. It won't be money back. This is don't take me bloody clothes, hang on. Pick the piss off. I nearly had it. Yeah, nearly had me clothes, hang on. Yeah, yeah, cheap at 10 bucks. Yeah, I'll just... Oh, mate. Thanks a lot. The, big, the extra large are the white ones, mate. Yeah, but the only being is out. I won't show you the black ones, because everyone wants the okay, black ones. The 10 bucks covers me cost, and I, I think I make about, it, uh, about two bucks a shirt or something. But that makes up for some of the ones I gave away. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I've got three boys and Richard, and they're all, apart from one of the boys, all mad into racing, so you know, I have to like it. I don't have much choice except at home by myself. <laughs> I wanted a pair of red boots, and I didn't have any. I had to buy a pair of blue ones. Who cares? Nobody sees your feet. Watch your fingers. Lane speed, which is 60 kilometres an hour, and uh, reporting through to race control any anybody that are above that speed. If they're above that speed, uh, I write a report which goes to the hierarchy upstairs and eventually gets dealt with by the stewards of the meeting. There's been fines in the past three, four, five, six hundred dollars for various breaches of pit lane speed. Get the <laughs> I started an engineering business which I wanted to drive a good race car, but then to fund it I knew I'd have to sell the components that I made. And to sell the components I made, I have to race myself and win races to prove them. That's the uh, difference where I'm running it as a business and the other guys run it as a hobby, if they're, especially if they're a privateer. You know, I may have, uh, for instance, sold a privateer a car and uh, so sold him the engine and all the stuff that goes with it and then he's out on the track there trying to race me and uh, I'm going to race these guys anyway so I might as well take their money off them and race them as well. That's your VT engine trying to be put into a VS. That's what I'll Larry spares. I'm doing mechanical engineering. I work in a pub with my fellow at university, and I work here at night. So uh, come four years' time, maybe five, I'm going to be in an F1 team, thinking of little cheat, uh, little ways to cheat, so they can go faster. And maybe another four years after that, I'm going to be chief designer. I'm a chief engineer from the F1 teams, and I'm going to get there too. How old are you now? 23. I'm really old. Past my prime. We work until uh, midnight on the car. And the guys probably got to wait about 12 30. And um, it's about 11 o'clock after we'd gone through absolutely everything. We had one last look over the car and found a loose wire on the main connector that comes up from the battery. And we're hoping that that was the, the cause of our problem. Quarter drive 716? Yeah. Right, we're driving. We're driving. Yeah. Come on, extension, I'm so okay. Uh, it's okay. Chris Murden's team are just trying to complete an engine change. Um, doesn't look like they're going to make it, I'd say. A couple of minutes, 25. A couple of minutes. How long have you got, Jim? Okay. About three minutes. They're yeah, just trying to fire the car now. It's still in the, in the paddock garage. Just chuck the seats back inside, mate. Yep. And shut the roller door. Don't push it, don't push it. You're not allowed to push that in the pit lane. Mate, is he going or not? Yeah, well, whenever you want us up there. You want 
tell us where we're going. Oh. <laughs> it's blind leading the blind, isn't it? Looks like we finally made it. Jesus. <laughs> so, Chris, how are you, alright? Where have you parked the car? If you can guarantee me an unpaid, Larry, if you can guarantee me an unpaid work experience in Melbourne, yeah. I'll move over here, get a night job, and I'll work in the day. Yeah, that's very good of you to say that. You've got to keep doing that. I mean, I, I mean, I've seen this. You, when you say free, you want to try and get on their expense roll, you know, mm -hmm. with your labour free, and that's nothing. Oh, wrong but sometimes with I don't even get that. But it doesn't no, matter. But they, you, know, you but, should try to no, get. No, but when you're green behind the ears, you've got to get experience. No, no, look, you're yeah. doing the right thing. You've got to have experience, yeah. I'll keep you in mind. Keep badgering me, though, no problem. I will. And, and anyone else. Oh, well, Kim knows all about me. I ring about oh, four or yeah. five times a week. What? Yeah. Uh, We're sitting outside the uh, steward's room. This is because I was a naughty little boy and uh, drove down pit lane at 66 kilometres an hour. And um, I'm challenging that because my own data suggests I was doing 61 kilometres long. Sorry to uh, keep you waiting, chaps. Would you like to come in? Yes, come in. <coughs> uh, Garth Wigston, Chairman of the SCS Stewards Panel, and on my left, thank you, Peter. Pal, Peter Svensson, Cairns Observer. Keith McKay, Steward. Having considered the fresh evidence presented, we find that the evidence where fresh does not go to your liability for the offence. It merely adds a further circumstance of mitigation of penalty. I want a record to show that I objected uh, to this uh, hearing at this time. I was, I'd stated uh, then that I was unable to prepare my case uh, fully by this time, and, not, and I uh, stand by that. Nothing's changed. However, I fronted up at this hearing, and uh, I'm not properly prepared for this case. So if, if you want to continue under those circumstances, you may do so, but it, it's not... Uh, I'm stating loud and clear that I'm not in a position to defend this properly. Under, uh, under the rules. If you would give us an adjournment to consider our position at the moment. Well, uh, this is now the second adjournment on this case, which the CAM well, sides at call. I'm going for. to ask for an adjournment of a few minutes, if you wouldn't mind, where we can con consider our positions. I'll ask you to leave the room for a moment while we consider that, okay. and I'll call you back in. Thank you. Thank you. track right down there. The pits start here, the cars get parked there. However, it's a ridiculous spot for a pit lane speed limit sign and uh, the CAMS rules, as I said, and I certainly sat on the council that made the rules, said the pit lane speed shall start at the pits. 
where the cars were parked, not 250 metres up the road. So I will vigorously fight it because it is uh, unjust. Look at old Larry! You <laughs> got the motors, my boy! We've done it before, it's no big deal. Oh, yeah. Win it, I mean. <laughs> win Bathurst. Yeah, if you win Bathurst, I'll cry. So I promise you, if we win Bathurst this year, if you want, I'll cry. <laughs> You're right, I'll tell you, you're right, mate. Have <laughs> a good job. Every fight's a good fight when you're about. Uh, Hello, Richard. How you going, mate? Oh, yeah. Where's my shirt, mate? Oh, you got one. I'll have mine. Oh, you're a bit slow then, Arthur. It's going to have anything worse happen than what's happened to this bloody thing. Uh, I still don't think I fixed it either, you know? Spare engine in there. I put it in last night when it beat you. Oh, fuck. There's one spot, Larry, going up across uh, the top here where you come up out of the cutting and you come up and around. And the the park. Up, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. the grade out there. Yeah, on the right. there you, go. you know, I think there's nothing wrong with this thing. And we're coming up. No, no, I'm experiencing exactly the same. Coming into pit lane, it's still a bit stiff, but on the track, it's perfect. It's on the track where it failed all of a sudden yesterday. It just picked out in a lap. Right. Anyway, I'm fine. After Queensland, we had all sorts of problems up there, and we just qualified. And so. Uh, to get out and do a reasonable time today is good. I'm very happy. Well, Have I been screwed near or haven't I? I don't know. We'll go organise this tyre, Richard. That's right, he's got to put his co driver in here when he gets one. Don't ticket around. Don't put it in. That's right, Number on the back window. Have a the rain light. I'll flick it on and off. Yeah, yeah. Rain light. And the wiper switch is here somewhere. Richard. Sure you've got one. There you go. At least screw it in this. Finish with this thing again. Okay? And listen, I asked you last night. Scrape that off with a razor blade. radio check. Just a bit shabby, okay? Yeah. No, that's a good start. Yeah, anything else? Better these things happen today than Sunday. Yeah. 